This is the Demystifying Mental Toughness podcast, hosted by David Charlton, and you're listening to this podcast to help you build your own mental toughness, or so that you can support other people or your clients better. Either way, you will learn more about developing this plastic personality trait that all but guarantees that you will perform better and lead a more prosperous life. Hi, and welcome back to the Demystifying Mental Toughness podcast with your host, David Charlton. This episode, well, it's more so for golf fans, for golfers, for golf coaches, and for any sports psychologists or mental skills coaches who have a golfing interest. And if you are a golf fan, you'll be well aware that the US Masters starts in around about eight weeks' time and is held at Augusta. Now, traditionally, this is the start of the golf season here in the UK. So between now and then, there'll be a lot of really excited golfers and many golf clubs coming out of the garage and being cleaned up. Now, roughly this time last year, I did a full interview with Brian Hemmings, a leading sports psychologist who's worked with a number of tour player golfers over the years. This episode was 160, and I've decided to take a short bite from this episode, such was its popularity which simply focuses on putting. Now, if you're a golfer, well, you'll be well aware that if you're going to have a good season this year, you're going to have to put well. And Brian offers some great advice. Great advice for the the golfer who gets into overthinking mode, overanalyzes their technique, and tries to predict the outcome of their putts. That's right, Brian goes on to talk about a, a method called quiet eye. I hope you enjoy it. Have you noticed the like different sort of tools, techniques have changed and the maybe the introduction of technology, brain training and things like that? Um, a, a little bit, I guess. I guess in terms of there's um, various apps, uh, you know, you, you, you've got more, I guess, um, I, I'm careful not to be cynical, but, you know, there's, there's the, the sort of saying of, of um, old wine in new bottles is you know there's a lot of things that are professed to be sort of new and actually well they're not that new they're just variations of things that have been done before and that's you know that that's fine um um but i don't think things have really changed yes you know we've got various other um psychological approaches coming in over the last i don't know the last five to five years or more in terms of something like act uh, as a sort of a third way third wave psychology but to me, you know, they're just different approaches. And yes, you, as a practitioner, you know which approach you take. But, but again, I think, again, to come back to the relationship, I think sometimes that's, that's, it can be people just too interested in technique where, you know, again, I'm much more firm believer it's content and process and they're very much interrelated. And the key thing is the relationships you form with people. One thing I would say, actually, coming back from coming back to techniques, is I've done a lot of work on quiet eye. You know, and then from Joan Vickers in, and I, I started, I, I sort of stumbled across that. Um, that was through experiential knowledge of working with players on putting greens and seeing them behave differently in practice to what they did in competition, even how they set up their practice. And I started to, you know, you observe people and you start to put things together about what they do different. You observe what they do differently. And I remember doing a workshop for a load of PGA coaches up at the Belfry. I can't remember what year it was. And I was talking about use of the eyes and things. And, and the guys, one of the coaches said to me, oh, you're talking about this thing. And I kind of puzzled what, what you're on about. And he said, oh, it was in Golf Digest, uh, something called Quiet Eye or something. And I hadn't come across it at that point in the literature. I remember, I, think I, might, I, was, I was out of, I'm not sure if I was self-employed by that time. But anyway, I started looking into it. And I've done a lot of work in that. And I'm not one to exaggerate the impact of a psychologist most of the time it isn't transformative most of the time it's a slow progressive change you're looking for with lots of bumps on the way just like it is in in technical development or uh, or physical development but i have found with quiet eye particularly on short puttings that can be almost a bit of an eureka for some players getting them to do that properly and you you can see very quick changes in people in terms of their performance and of course missing short parts can add a significant amount of shots to your round so yeah. something w- which something which is deceptively looks deceptively simple and yet we know if we work in golf it can be very very tough because of the expectations and and, and so on but i have found that to be very very impactful so i would say from my early days 
of working in golf to what my work might have evolved to look like in a practical sense. I'd be doing a a, a, a lot of that and utilising quiet eye sometimes as well in terms of other aspects of the game, in terms of long game where people get, oh, I'm talking about very, very good players here where they become overly technical and sort of tie themselves up in knots mechanically because they're thinking so much about movements that they underperform. And so I, I do a lot more work, I would say, on use of your eyes and use of vision. So where do you look and for how long? Kind of typical kind of quiet eye gaze control stuff. Because uh, I found that's that's actually much more impactful quick and quicker than kind of the other more standard cognitive approaches. Do you want to just tell the listeners a little bit more about how that actually works, the, the, the quiet eye stuff? Uh, well, I guess it, in, in, in simple in putting, all it is is in, in target related activities. It's, it's where does one put their gaze? What do they look at? And at key points and for how long during the execution of a skill. So in putting, for example, when people are, let's say that they're, they're nervous or anxious or unsure, if you put some eye trackers on, they look down at the ball, you'll see that their vision is sort of scattering about. They're not really focusing on one point. So if you say where you are looking, they'll sometimes say, I'm not sure. Or they'll say, I- I'm looking at the ball. And I say, well, where on the ball are you looking? And actually, the, the, the research tends to suggest it's the top or the back of the ball. Anecdotally, I'd say with the best players I've worked with, they always say the back of the ball. I always focus on the back of the ball. And I say, why do you, why do you look at the back of the ball? And I say, well, that's where you're going to make contact with it. And so it's obvious, but a lot of players don't. They're thinking so much. They follow the they follow the putter face backwards. They're looking at their hands. They're thinking about their shoulders. And actually, they lose sight of the target at key moments. So it's to focus on a very simple thing, the back of the ball. And then what you often find with players is they'll they'll track the ball off the face. So because the hole is near, they want to see if the ball goes in. I want to see the result because I want to know if this goes in. Often out of anxiety, some of the best players as well would say they want to look out of keenness. But of course, they think they're looking after the ball has gone and it's left the club face. But if you put cameras on them, the ball is still in contact with the club face when they're starting to move. And of course, as soon as you start to move your eyes, other things start, your head starts to move, shoulders start to move. So then they blame, they they think it's technical. Mm. But actually, it's a psychological thing. It's that I want to look at the result. And so coaches would often emphasize, keep your head still. And I'd say, no, don't keep your head still. Because if you're thinking about keeping your head still, your attention is on your head. You want your attention on the ball. And how, what sort of drills would you give a golfer to, to be able to uh, overcome that? Well, first of all, I just give a lot of verbal commands about very clear in the direction. I'm only going to change, work on two things. I'm going to get you to focus on the back of the ball. And all I want you to do is when they get a hang of that, then I get them work on them keeping their eyes still in contact and, and sort of give them a rough idea about, okay, where should you pick up the roll of the ball if you if you keep your eyes still? There should be a slight dwell before you track the ball. So you might li- m- miss the first couple of feet of the putt and to get a feel of that. It, but remember, it's experiential because once they start seeing, I'm talking about people who are technically proficient, they'll see the ball go in the hole. And of course, like, the way our nervous system works is, is it, although this feels unusual to keep my eyes still, well, bloody hell, the result is this is going in the hole an awful lot. So then you don't have to say trust it. You just let them experience it. Yeah. So I give a lot of verbal commands, keep your eyes still. And then and then I say, uh, kick back of the ball. And then I say, keep your eyes still at contact, just still, and just let them do that. Sometimes, you know, you can get little um, ball markers that they can press in. And I say, as soon as you see the ball, you know, put the ball on top of that. As soon as you see the ball marker, then you can look because the yeah. ball's gone. But then you, obviously you can't do that in a round, so you have to take the training away. So people, often the best players, will say they'll look for the they'll look for the grass where the ball was, or they'll look for the shade where the ball was. And when they've seen that, they know it's. And of course, realistically, David, with, with pressure and competition, it's one of those one of those truisms. It's it's easier said than done because the, the, the because the the, the the urge to look is so intense. But the best players do it. And as you say, it can, it can be trained, though, which is, which is fantastic. It can be trained. And so when you, when you say about, I was thinking about when you say about what's mental toughness is so broad, but there's an example of mental toughness is the ability to just still do very, very fundamental, simple things when it will feel like it's very hard to do that, where I want to search for something else. Uh, that's, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's difficult to talk about quiet time because it, for the readers, oh, sorry, for the listeners who don't know a lot about it, then I encourage them to read about it. 
and maybe a very practical article. Uh, and, and I've always found, and, and I know the guys at Exeter, Mark Wilson, Sam Vine, do some excellent research. And it's laboratory based. And, and some of the, of course, the art is taken from the science into, uh, you know, when they talk into quite eye about how long you should keep your eyes still for. My experience with golfers is they tell you F off because it's not practical. Hmm. So I've had to learn ways of getting them to keep their eyes still for a certain period of time without thinking about time. Yeah. Well, you f- you'll find different individuals or will have different preferences as well. Yes, exactly. And some people count. Some people count, just go one, two. And it's fine. I, I say there's no set way. It's working with an individual to work out how will they achieve that. Um, but as I say, of all the, I'm, I'm not, I, I've never been one to over emphasize the potential, you know, you'll get a 10% gain in performance or 20 That's to me, that's a bit, of, you know, that's rubbish. Yeah. It's um, a lot of salesy but, sort of marketing. Yeah. It's sales, but, 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 but that is something where I've, through personal experience, I've seen, Actually, some very, very quick changes in people with that. And, and I remember some classic ones. I remember, of course, it, it's not just the result. I remember working with an England golfer who's on tour now. I won't say his name. And he was talking about fast downhill putts. And obviously, the anxiousness of, I'll oh, get this ball rolling. And it's, where's this going to end up? And we were doing a bit of, we were doing some quiet eye stuff. And he turned around and he said, to Brian, he said, that's incredible. He said, I've got no more shit in my head. <laughs> You know, you know, so it's there. You know, this is this is this isn't academic. You're working with real players who, uh, yeah. So I think I enjoy the quiet stuff because it's 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 in, it's it's impactful. And um, now, as you say, the most golfers do get caught in that trap of overthinking, don't they? Where their their mind is just so so active and the they're analysing their technique and that they're either in the past or they're, they're in the future. Yes, exactly. And that's a really good point you made there, because I say, you know, they'll say about being in the past or in the future, and I say, quiet eye, if you keep your eyes still during a part, you are staying in the present moment there. Because if once you start looking, you're looking for the future before you've even finished this bit. And so, so there's a classic example of how you can do that. So what did you think about that? In some ways, it was like getting back to basics, at least I thought. So when it came down to to your golf and your pre-shot routine in relation to your putting, clearly the quiet eye method takes away your focus from trying to control your hands and your arms and getting overly anxious about where your club face should be pointing and how you want to take the putter back to concentrating on one thing and the use of your eye. So ahead of this new season... I'd recommend that you do some more research on this because it really could help you make this year a very, very good year for you and your golf. And I'm going to leave you to ponder this next eight weeks or so. How can you integrate quiet eye into your practice? And if you are in the UK, perhaps you'll be putting indoors in your house or in an indoor facility. You might be doing your drills to ensure your alignment's good or your distance control. But how can you just integrate maybe five minutes per day of quiet eye? This is going to help you deal better with pressure. That's my challenge there for you. And for the non-golfer who's perhaps listened to this podcast episode, quiet eye doesn't necessarily have to be specific solely to golf and to putting. You can adopt this approach in other sports, be it cricket, be it rugby as a goal kicker, football as a penalty taker. Because there are times when people are going to get overly anxious. They're going to fast forward. They're going to try and predict outcomes, which means that their movements aren't going to be particularly smooth. So again, maybe do a Google search around Quiet Eye and other sports too. And until next week, please do sign up to the Mental Edge newsletter, which goes out on a regular basis, where I share tools and techniques just like this one, so that you can play your sport to the best of your ability on a more consistent basis and ideally with a smile on your face too. Have a great week. If you enjoyed this episode of the Demystifying Mental Toughness podcast with David Charlton, do check out my website sport-excellence.co.uk and my online sports psychology resources. The Sport-Excellence website has essential resources for anyone looking to build their own mental toughness or the mental toughness of their athletes or teams or if you want to achieve peak performance more often or optimal functioning. The Sport Excellence website has everything you need to keep moving forward and thrive. So go on, head over to sport-excellence.co.uk to find out more.